Hi, this is the first episode. We are today visiting the prototyping lab of the University College of Ghent. We'll get a tour around this lab from, by Matthias Vermeulen, who is responsible uh, for this lab. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. My name is Baptiste Le Mans. Welcome to Antocasts. Okay, hi Matthias. Uh, welcome to the first uh, episode of Antocasts. Uh, so today you are giving us a tour uh, in this uh, lab. So uh, let's kick it off with my first obvious question. Uh, so what do you do in this lab? What technologies are you using? And, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, uh, in this lab, this is a lab especially for virtual and rapid prototyping. So what we do here, uh, we can here do some 3D modeling, uh, drawing on computer is that. Uh, if you can't draw, we can also scan in 3D, so you bring your device here, like uh, a knob or something, and we scan it in. Mm -hmm. Then we can print it, or we can also do some uh, virtual prototyping, like a CIA analyze, analysis on it. Uh, we, can't do, we can do more than just 3D printing, like uh, silicon casting, uh, some parts. Yeah. That's in short uh, what we do here. Okay. So uh, perhaps you can, uh, for the viewers at home, uh, we can have a look around and see what uh, kind of devices you have, what uh, printers you are using. Yeah, that is good. Uh, perhaps you can give a short overview about which printers you have here. Yeah, uh, mostly we have uh, low budget 3D printers. These printers are mainly based on the FDM technology. Mm -hmm. So FDM, what, the, what is FDM? Well, mean? FDM is like, uh, we start with a wire of plastic like in this case PLA, and what it's going to do, we are going to melt that wire just above its melting point. Mm -hmm. That happens here in this nozzle, and then uh, here we have a small nozzle, uh, its size is 0.4 millimeters, and uh, through that hole we extrude the wire, and so we are going to uh, yeah. print on model layer by layer. So kind of a, a mini version of a glue gun, and gluing the... Yes, indeed. It's, I always explain it like that, uh, take glue gun, uh, move it on three uh, axes and you have 3D yeah. printed. Okay, so uh, great. We will have a look at each machine individually and then we can perhaps uh, highlight the, the, the strong points and the, the weaker features yep. of uh, each printer. Okay, that's a good idea. Okay, okay so uh, this printer, uh, which printer is it and uh, why is it the first? Uh, yep. Yeah, it all start, our complete lab started with this printer. What is it? It's a Redmond printer. Uh, this printer was based uh, on the RepRap philosophy from Adrian Bauer uh, that everyone should have his own printer and that printer should be able to make itself. Mm -hmm. So a small company uh, made uh, a printer to this ID yeah. and this was uh, the result, the first version. I have to say we have this printer now for five years. Uh, it was one of our major printers. It was very re reliable. Uh, we could uh, put a print on in the morning and at the evening and the printer was still busy printing. It was a very re reliable printer. In its days when it just came out, it was a very accurate printer. It printed at a resolution of 0.2 millimeters, mm -hmm. which was uh, five, six years ago very good. Uh, it was a very good printer, only drawback, it was slow. Mm -hmm. It printed very well, but very slow. Uh, if I uh, compare to the other printers, this printer took two to three times more time to print the same part. And why is it slow? Is there a specific reason uh, why it prints slower than other printers? It's just the design, actually. As you can see, this here is a printer, it's very big, it's very heavy so uh, you have to be able to uh, move it so it takes a lot of energy and uh, it has to start uh, with the movement it has to stop with the movement so yeah. heavy uh, you have to calculate them that's why it's all slow uh, okay so um, okay thanks for this first uh, overview up to the right. next one yes Okay, so the second 3D printer, I think it's uh, one of the most famous 3D printers. Uh, so can you tell us a thing about it? Uh, yes, indeed. This one is the MakerBot. Uh, MakerBot, a very big company now these days. Well, uh, we started with uh, our Redmans, 
very good devices, uh, but we noticed we had problems when we wanted to print in ABS. Because ABS, it goes to warp. So that's why we said we need another printer. Warping, what, what, what is it exactly? Uh, well, is warping it? is like uh, that your uh, parts that you print, they start to deform. Yeah. Because uh, I always explain it like uh, the example of water. Freeze it uh, and uh, you got ice and uh, it grows bigger in volume. Yeah. Uh, our plastic is the same. ABS, when you melt it, uh, the volume increases. And when you cool it down, it increases again. So uh, you get uh, internal tensions uh, in your part. Yeah. So your part starts to deform. Uh -huh. okay. So we had that problem and then we looked for what is the alternative? How can we solve that problem? And MakerBot had a very good device for that. What's the difference between this one and the Redman? Well, this build plate. This one has a heated build plate, mm -hmm. which means uh, we keep our part on uh, a temperature higher than a room temperature, like in this case 110 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. So, and when the part is print completely printed, uh, we let it cool down uh, more evenly, so mm -hmm. the part doesn't go to warp. So during printing, uh, the whole part has the same temperature, or at least yes, that's indeed. the idea? that's the idea. Uh -huh. okay. So, this was a very big advantage of this 3D printer. What are the drawbacks? Well, as you can see it, our print size here, we have 10 centimeters on 10 centimeters, yep. and a height of 8 or 9 centimeters. Mm -hmm. Instead of the Redman, we can print to 20 centimeters centimeters on 20 and 20 too high. Yeah, yeah. So this is mainly for uh, small parts, mm -hmm. but we can print in ABS. Another drawback is that this one is a very noisy machine. You don't want to have it next <laughs> to your bed. Okay, so uh, that's it for this printer. Uh, let's go to the next one. Okay. Okay, so here we are at, uh, with the latest uh, 3D printer in this uh, series of low-cost uh, 3D printers. So this is the Ultimaker, I can see, but can you tell us something about it? Yes, indeed. Actually, this is the Ultimaker one. Well, uh, why did we bought this one? Well, we wanted a 3D printer that can print very fast at a very good uh, accuracy. And time when you bought it, it had building layers of 0.1 millimeters. Now they already enhanced it to 0.06 millimeters. Uh, why can it print so fast and so accurate? Well, all because of the print head. As you can see, this print head is very small in comparison to that of a Redman. Yeah. When we look at the demand dimensions, uh, it has the same dimensions of a Redman. Why, why, why can it be so small? Why, why is it? Uh well, this can be so small because uh, we have here our gear. Ah. So uh, instead of having here the uh, engine to uh, feed the extruder, it's all placed at the side. Mm -hmm. How do they do it? Well, it's like uh, the same uh, of your bike, no brakes. Uh -huh. You have a tube and in that uh, we have our uh, filament wire. That's a clever trick. <laughs> yes, indeed, it's a very clever trick. and. Uh, as you can see, it really works. Yeah. Building dimensions, uh, it has the same uh, building capacity of Redman, so 20 uh, on 20 on 22 high. It's very accurate. Uh, drawbacks, well, I have to say, uh, software sometimes, uh, like with the Redman or the MakerBot, I can store my settings. Mm -hmm. I can say, well, now I print in clear PLA or I print in blue PLA. Uh, by adding a color, you have to adjust a, li a little bit and like increase your temperature, slow down your feed rate. Yep. With the other printers, uh, I can store my settings, so I can say from this one is blue PLA, I just click it. This here, I can do not. I, every time I have to say uh, I change my settings, I can store them. Yep. Okay, thanks. So, uh, up to the next. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. So this uh, next printer uh, looks like it's more expensive than the other ones. We have to uh, speak a little bit louder here because we are in a lab, but that's how labs are, of course. Yes, indeed. So uh, this printer, tell us, uh, can you tell us more about it? Yes, this is a high-resolution uh, device. As you can see, it's a little bit bigger than our low-budget printers, although it only has a print capacity of 340 millimeters on 340 and 20 uh, centimeters high. 
So the build capacity is not that much no. bigger as from the... Indeed, uh, it has twice the build capacity. Ah. So, uh, what is this printer? Well, this one doesn't work uh, with a wire, but this one works with something like that. What is it? Well, it's a fluid uh, that will uh, cure under UV light. So, this one is fluid. So, what it does it do? Well, we have a print head. Maybe I'll just open it so that you can see it better. As you can see, it looks a little bit more sophisticated uh, than uh, my low budget device. So, this here is completely my build head. Uh, as you can I can see it, you probably not, but I have eight print heads instead of one. Four are for my support material and four are for my building material. So this one prints in two materials actually. So this complete head uh, will go up and down uh, my build plate and it will deposit uh, small layers of fluid which will immediately be cured uh, by UV light. When one layer is done, this table will drop a little bit and the next layer will uh, go on. This one is a very uh, accurate device. I, I can print in building layers of uh, 60 microns. So instead, uh, when you compare it to the low budget devices, it's quite accurate. Which one is the fastest? Well, it's about the same. Uh, if I put a part on this one, or on my uh, low budget uh, printer, the time that I need to print will be the same. Only accuracy uh, will change. And of course, as you can see, this is a very sophisticated uh, 3D printer, so it also has a small little bit price. Yeah. Okay, thanks uh, for this uh, overview. Uh, next up, uh, this kind of. Yes, indeed. Okay, so this one is not really a 3D printer, but it's a scanner for 3D models. Uh, can you tell us yes, more about it? Well, uh, if you want to print something in 3D, well, you have to have a file. So you have your drawing on the computer. So you or can draw it uh, with a program like Google SketchUp, SolidWorks, or another program. Mm -hmm. Or if you can draw it, you can scan your parts. Well, how does it work? Very simple. First of all, you need your part. Like in this case, just a ball. You mount it on the uh, table. It's a rotating table. And we are going to scan it. Here we have a scanner. How does it work? Well, we have two cameras and a laser. So a laser will scan the whole area. Two ca uh, cameras will record that area. When do that area is done, the table will turn a little bit like depending on your settings 10 degrees 36 degrees and uh, it will start the process all over again then all these images will be connected to each other so and you will have your 3d part when this one is completely done you have to put your model like this so that this area and then afterwards this area will be scanned too and you will have a good model so you then yeah, then you have an exact copy of the origin Yes, indeed, uh, an exact I would say because you have your accuracy, like this one has uh, half a meter, uh, half a millimeter of accuracy. So uh, it's mostly uh, used for parts that are like this, an easy shape or not too small. Don't expect here to uh, uh, put your a very complex uh, ring or so. That's too small. It has to be in the range from, like, say, five centimeters to twenty centimeters. Yes. Okay, interesting. So they don't have to make uh, the model themselves. They can just copy something that's existing. Indeed, like uh, we work a lot with the people of School of Arts that are uh, people who do shoe design, architectures. Like for shoe design, uh, those people they are used to make their models in clay. Yep. So what do, they, do we do? We don't draw it but because it are very complex geometries. Mm -hmm. We just take the clay model, we put it on the table and we scan it completely. It's quite easy for them to make a 3D model then? Uh, yes and no. It's easy, you have your model very quickly, but don't expect your model to be perfect. 
it will have some errors in it, like uh, a face that wasn't scanned properly. So that will you have to repair. Yeah. So it's not a magical trick uh, with push on the button and it will be a perfect model. Mm -hmm. It has some post processing. Okay. So uh, yeah, thanks. No problem. Okay, uh, thanks for the overview uh, from all the machines. Um, I have prepared some questions, uh, so I will just shoot and we'll see how it works. Uh, so first of all, of all the printers that you have shown me, and especially the low-cost ones, um, which one do you prefer uh, and why? Well, it depends on what your part must be able to do. Uh, if you want to part print it in ABS or in PLI yeah. or in PLA, it will be another printer. Yeah. If you say uh, I want my part in ABS, I would say the MakerBot <coughs> because of uh, the heat of build platform. Yeah. Uh, if you say just uh, PLA is good for me, uh, then I would say the Ultimaker. Yeah. Of course, that's from the devices that I have. Uh, there are still uh, a lot of other devices uh, and other brands. Yeah. So from the device I have, I would say the maker bot from the Ultimaker. And what's the difference between PLA and uh, ABS? Is there a quality difference or uh, um, accuracy difference? Quality or? and accuracy will be about the same. Uh, more what for me and uh, the biggest difference uh, that for me the reason I usually use PLA is that it's a, a bio, bi bio compatible material. It's uh, economically, it's uh, environmental friendly, like ABS. It's, uh, ABS has a lot of uh, toxic uh, gases, so they are still searching for is it healthy to print with uh, ABS. So with PLA you can uh, just dump your old uh, used models onto the compost? Or is that a little uh, bit more If you have a couple of years yes. time to wait for them to uh, compost. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, so I've heard that uh, you are, uh, with this lab, you are also uh, integrating 3D printers and 3D systems uh, into educational programs. Yes, indeed. Uh, can you tell me more about it? Yes, well, uh, not only for our educational, uh, we want to incorporate it, but we start want to start already level lower uh, in the high schools. So what is the purpose for us? Well, uh, in the high school, Technical uh, students, they learn how all the conventional techniques. They learn how to mill, how to drill, yeah. but uh, that's only one part of how to make models. 3D printing, it's although it's already exists for 20 to 30 years, it's just the last five years that it's actually booming. Yeah. A lot of people start to know it. Uh, they think it's new, but it's not. So a lot of people start to work with it and you see the market segment of 3D printing uh, is increasing year by year. Yeah. So I think uh, they learn all those conventional techniques but they see nothing from 3D, from 3D printing. Yeah. So we want to uh, assist high schools uh, with our lab so that they don't have to buy that uh, equipment. Students come to here, they learn everything from us. They learn how to draw something in 3D. Is it a day or a week or something? Uh, it's one day. One day? Okay. It's a full day. So, uh, of course, we can see everything, but when after one day they already know from 3D printing, that is, they have seen the device, they have worked with it, they know from uh, the drawing, oh, it's not just a file, we, we send it to the printer. Uh, we have to prepare it uh, when it's printed we have to do some post processing yeah. so actually they learn all the steps and do you have students asking for where can i buy such a printer and assemble it at home or yes uh, yeah. i have all kinds of questions some want to build their own printer some already have a printer and ask for where do you buy uh, your uh, material or um, do I have to draw all my models uh, by myself or can I download? Um, I get a lot of questions as well for the printers from where to buy, what to buy, or I have this problem with my printer too, where can I download stuff? It's awesome. Yes, indeed. And, uh, I think they are all going to study here or <laughs> I hope so. uh, they will be future students. Yeah. I hope so, because that brings us to our next purpose and that's our educational uh, I teach in a, a professional bachelor in the electromechanics. 
So, uh, of course, our students learn all the conventional techniques, but here uh, they also uh, start to learn from 3D printing, what is it? They see some technical background from uh, all the different types, because we, ha we have seen now the low budget so on the FDM days, we have seen our object, but there are dozens of other techniques. Yeah. So they learn the most important ones, when to use them. Like if, uh, if uh, they want a part, uh, like in, in titanium, which printer can they use, which can't they use. Uh, I learned them, them how to 3D scan, uh, how to fix their parts, because you can draw something, but uh, you have to generate an STL file. Uh, it's sometimes it gives problems. So they learn how to repair that, um, they learn how to work with printers, how to repair the printers. I want to give them a complete overview of what they can do with 3D printing and what are the most differences between 3D printing and conventional techniques. Yeah, okay. Okay. So perhaps let's, uh, let's elaborate a bit more on, on uh, what you're doing here with the students. Uh, do you have students working on, on their thesis uh, program uh, with, with these printers or yes. on these printers? Or? Yes, uh, I have students working with the printers in the thesis. Like okay. the students, uh, they work for a company, then uh, they need to make some prototypes. Uh, they can okay. do that on our printers. But I also have uh, students who are actually working on the printers, uh, who has a task to uh, take one printer to uh, make some add-ins, like uh, I would say uh, one printer needs uh, another print head, uh, a second print head, so that I can print in two materials. Uh, another thesis that I have this year is like with uh, my wire for uh, the extruder. Um, I notice I have a lot of problems with my uh, feed rate. So uh, the, that's just a wire on spool, but uh, spool jams uh, once in a while. So he needs to make uh, so these new students are making uh, improvements to the existing uh, 3D yes, printers. Yes, indeed. Uh -huh. So yes. Uh, they make uh, or they make improvements, but sometimes we just start from another concept. Like now, also uh, of course it's low budget, so once in a while something gets wrong. Uh, the extruder gets jammed, uh, so I have half a part. Now uh, I would say I have to kick the parts uh, in the bin, the trash bin, but that's not a good way. So in my second year uh, of my, my students, I need... Uh, in second year they have actually a project. Yep. So that's in groups of five or six people that they have to work uh, on something. But this year uh, I said I want two groups who will not work on the standard project, but uh, I want them to work uh, to do some research for me. Yeah. Research with 3D printers. So what are they going to do? Well, they take all my trash parts and they have to find a way to make a new uh, filament yeah. based from that uh, trash. Yeah. So they have to find a way to... So they have to build a recycler to yes, scramble it. So they have to choose, uh, will they uh, start just uh, like uh, they have the part, uh, they chop it in small pieces and will they use that uh, as a new uh, base material or do they make a new filament wire? Also they have to check from, uh, can I use 100% uh, recycled material or do I have to add some new material? So they will actually do some research on it. So the students uh, coming to you, uh, uh, which are not uh, engineers or, or don't have a technical background, uh, does it exist or, or uh, where sometimes. are they coming from? What well, uh, I have a lot of students from uh, another department here at University College, mm -hmm. uh, namely from the cask. What are those people? Well, that are the new designers. Yeah. Uh, some uh, design clothing, uh, some design shoes, uh, then I have the architects. So uh, they want to use the printer, mm -hmm. and that's also a possibility here. Yeah. Uh, students can come here, uh, and I noticed I have two groups. Uh, the groups of students like the designers who just want to have a printed part, yeah. who have a, an ID and uh, they have to draw it or scan it and then they want the part. Uh, most of those people uh, don't have a technical background. Yeah, okay. So for them, uh, we can actually say, okay, uh, 
we will draw the part, uh, we will print it for you. Of course, I can't do that for 100 students. Yeah. So uh, we are very limited. Uh, and uh, is it free if uh, people are interested, if students are interested to print something? Well, it's not free. We work with a very democratic prices for our students. Like uh, most of the time, it's just a little fee for the printer and uh, the material that they use. Uh -huh. Like uh, so, we we have this. Uh, this model here, which is quite huge, it is, which is quite uh, detailed. Uh, perhaps we can give uh, an example. How much would you pay uh, for this? Well, uh, if I sell this model uh, for, like, say, just uh, a person, I would say it would be around 60 euros. 60 for, euros. Yes, for students, it will be around uh, 35 to 40 euros because uh -huh. they get a discount. Uh -huh. Okay, it's uh, cheap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, can companies also make use of this lab? Uh, yes, of course. Although I have to say, my experience is that companies uh, they want very accurate models. So I already printed some parts with the low budget uh, 3D printer, but I noticed they need more quality. So for the professional uh, companies, uh, I usually use my high resolution 3D printer. So that means it's more expensive and. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, the parts are more expensive, but they are more accurate, and sometimes uh, the company just needs a high quality part. For example, if I would want to get this same model, the same size of model, uh, in very high quality with the object printer, uh, then for this price model, range, I think it would be in the price range like five to six hundred uh -huh. euros. So tenfold almost of the yes, indeed. low cost printers. Uh, indeed. But of course the quality is a lot better. Yeah. And do you do only printing or? No, uh, we are actually trying to uh, tell to our companies from we do a lot more. Like most companies know us for, for the 3D printing uh, service that we offer. Mm -hmm. But we also offer uh, a more engineering cycle. So uh, we can help the companies uh, with uh, designing their products, uh, designing uh, make a drawing from the products in 3D, uh, do some analysis on it uh, to see if there's a good part, then make the prototypes and make adjustments again. So are you are really helping with, with the development of the product and not only just the 3D indeed, printing? Indeed, indeed we are helping with the, development, with the development of the product. Why do we do that? Well, a large company has, it, has its own uh, research unit. Mm -hmm. But uh, small companies, uh, they don't. So yep. most of the time, they don't have the time to do that or they don't have the knowledge to do it. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we want to help them okay. to make better products. Okay, so for the companies uh, perhaps watching, uh, how can they reach out uh, to you? Or? Well, uh, they can always email. We have a Facebook account, we have a Twitter account, okay. we have our own website. Okay. So uh, I will put these links in, in the end of this video, so yep. uh, that That's good idea. companies can contact you. Um, can you give uh, an example of, of such a uh, project with, with the company? Or? Well, that's actually quite uh, difficult to uh, give some names because uh, a lot of things that we do uh, are actually confidential. Uh -huh. So, but I have to say, I already did some things for the automotive industry, then yeah. complete auto branches, biomedical, it's and like why is it confidential? Is it because it's so new or...? Yes, uh, at our most of the time uh, new techniques, uh, things that they want to improve. Yeah. So most of the uh, companies uh, will apply for a patent. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I'm totally excited, so I will ask my final question. What does the future hold for uh, this prototyping lab? Do you have plans or...? Yes, of course we have plans. Well, uh, we were one of the first uh, university colleges who already was busy with uh, 3D printing and of course we want to maintain uh, that position. So, uh, what are we going to do? Well, we are going to uh, expand actually our lab. We are planning to buy some new uh, 3D printers, some low budgets uh, on the MDM technique, maybe some long techniques. Yep. And of course, uh, I want to look for other devices like I would like to have a laser cutter. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to look for my uh, casting, uh, my silicon casting, for what other equipment do I need.
or what would be an extra addition uh, to the tools that I have now. Yeah. So I actually want to uh, make my uh, complete engineering cycle uh, mm. closed loop. Yes, uh, indeed. Uh -huh. Nice. Okay, and if, uh, if companies are interested to do workshop here, is there some events or something you yes. organize? Uh, you can always look at our website. We already have some uh, events planned uh, on okay. different uh, levels. Okay. Uh, are they public or...? Yes, they are public. Uh, and uh, depending from the event, uh, we have an event for people who actually know nothing from uh, 3D printing, mm -hmm. where we start from the basics. Then we have a more advanced class. Yeah. Uh, we are trying to make a big event uh, around prototyping, uh, for especially for companies, uh, so that we can show them from that's possible, yeah. that can be do. There they can ask more detailed questions. Uh, yes, indeed. And for the uh, exact data of that, uh, they can look at our website. Ah, okay, so I will put a link to your website in the show notes. So uh, thanks for your time. Uh, it's an awesome lab. Uh, I'm very excited about it and I hope a lot of people get to know this. Uh, yes, I hope it too, because yeah. everyone is welcome, especially okay. my students. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Hi, this is it for this episode of Antocast. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to uh, get in contact with this team, because they are really awesome to work with, you can find more uh, contact details in the show notes. Um, yeah, my name is Baptiste Le Mans. See you next time.